So now we're going to talk about tests of significance. You've seen and done tests of significance. When you do things like t-tests, f-tests, chi-square tests, and you're comparing things to alpha or holding them to a standard, like a 95% significance level, you're conducting a test of significance. But to reiterate, the coefficient of determination, or r squared, is not a test of significance. There are scenarios where an r squared of 0.1 is amazing, and others where 0.9 is not good enough. And there are tests of significance at play for different models, both the overall model specification in the form of ANOVA and t-tests for individual variables. So when we're looking at a regression model, we often look at the F test to consider the model as a whole, and we look at our individual independent variables using t-tests. So our betas are the unknown parameters, and we estimate these values when we calculate them in a regression model. And we can conduct joint tests of significance about all of the parameters or individual parameters. For these tests of significance to be valid, the random error term must be normally distributed, and what you see pictured is what a normally distributed residual looks like. It should take this very linear shape. Joint tests of significance test the overall usefulness of a regression. We use the F distribution to measure the significance of overall models. Now in practice, you'll never have to manually calculate an F statistic. But it's important to know what information goes into the calculation of that statistic. All of this information can be gathered from the ANOVA associated with the model. Some programs show you the whole table, like Excel, and others just give you the highlights unless you very specifically ask for it. For example, R only provides it with the ANOVA function. This is the standard format for an ANOVA table. If you're confronted with an ANOVA table and don't remember what goes in what cell, you can always come back to this in the slides or the text. We can also compare it to a populated ANOVA table associated with uh, a, a, our college earnings model. So when we looked at the college earning model, uh, model 3 was our preferred model, and this was the ANOVA table associated with it. And just by looking at the significance F cell, you would know if a model is significant. If it's not yet clear, let's walk through the process. The null hypothesis is that our unknown parameters are insignificant. They are all indistinguishable from zero. Our alternative hypothesis is that at least one is significantly different from zero. Given our values for SSR, SSE, and degrees of freedom, we can calculate our F statistic as 20.868, which was given in the ANOVA table. There is our F value of 20.868 in our ANOVA table. And we can refer to an F table to find the critical F statistic for the matching degrees of freedom to compare our calculated statistic. If our calculated value is larger than the critical value, success! We can reject the null. But it, it is possible to find joint significance without each one of the variables in the model being significant.
And here we can reject the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level. The predictor variables are jointly significant in explaining our earnings. So let's look at the individual variables for our three models about post-college earnings. So here are our results for model one, two, and three. And I want you to note that not all of the independent variables in the models are statistically significant. Take a look at the debt variable, for example, which have p-values of 0.378 in Model 2 and 0 0.230 in Model 3. Those would not be statistically significant. However, we can look at our f-tests and we find that all three models, the p-values being in the brackets, are significant overall. So to have a, a valid model doesn't mean that every variable within that model is going to be statistically significant. So let's first look at this generally. If a beta for x is not statistically different from zero, then it basically drops out of the equation. The x variable it represents does not influence y, or the dependent variable. In general, when we want to test whether the population coefficient uh, beta sub j is different from greater than or less than beta sub j naught, where beta sub j naught is the hypothesized value of beta j, the different hypotheses take one of these values. Usually we're comparing the value to zero, but know that we can compare it to different values under certain circumstances. The test statistic we use for individual coefficients is the t-test, calculated as shown. Statistical packages perform this test and report the results to you when you specify and run these different models. So let's take a look back at the results from our third earnings model. And we can see our calculated T statistics in the T stack column. So that information is present, but we don't have to calculate it manually. It's provided to us, whether we're looking at conducting our model in Excel or in R. And with that, we also have our p-values, and we can see that cost, graduation rate, and whether or not the college is in a city are all statistically significant at that alpha of 0.05. So now let's look at whether the cost variable influences earnings. If we look to a t-table of p-values, we'd find that the p-value is 0.0002. So we can reject the null hypothesis. This means that cost is significant in explaining earnings. Take another look and determine what other variables are significant at explaining earnings. Now let's practice. For a sample of 20 New England cities, a sociologist studies the crime rate in each city crimes per 100,000 residents as a function of its poverty rate and its median income in thousands. Here is a summary of the results. At the 5% significance level, are the poverty rate and income jointly significant in explaining the crime rate? And at the 5% significance level, is poverty significant? Is income significant? Take a few moments, take a look, and think about it and see if you have mastered how we can go about evaluating the results of our regression models using tests of significance.